Stick around, we have a lot more fun and surprises on the way. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I'm Ryan. This is Fuzzy Orange Makes. And today I'm going to be making a extension switch. Uh, you may ask, why would you need an extension switch? For my purpose, it's for cutting those overly large sheets of plywood or extra long boards. Something that when you're starting off that cut, uh, rather than turning on the saw and then backing away from it, and then trying to finagle your piece into place and having the blade running, um, you can do all that and then nearby you can set the switch to turn on. Uh, also that will work for turning off the switch when you're done, so after you feed it through you can stop it. So the idea came about with a contest that was put on by Andrew Klein. He's affiliated with these mag switches and so as part of it was to come up with designs that could utilize these in different ways. So my first idea was a video for my mag switch dust connector, which I'll put a link over here. I realize this may not be for everyone. Uh, people may be comfortable with their current switch location and they want to always know 100% it's in the same exact location. Uh, and there's other, I know, inherent risks is you could accidentally hit it because it's in a different location. You could, um, it could fall off of something and accidentally stop halfway through a cut or it shouldn't start because this particular type of switch, the on button is recessed. Um, so again, this may not be for everyone. Hopefully it'll work for me. This is just a prototype. I have the idea. I have the plans that I designed made up. It's really just using scrap plywood and one of these. This is the MagJig 150, so it's rated to hold 150 pounds. That should keep it in place. So obviously for this to work, you need to have a metal surface to attach it to. So one location could be just on top of the table saw. If you have a cast iron table saw, um, that would only really work if you're doing a lot of repeated cuts and you need to start and stop it maybe periodically and it's just right there convenient. You could have it off to the side. Um, or you could attach it to another tool that may be in the vicinity behind or near where you are feeding through. So if you're feeding constantly and or feeding a long piece and there might be a tool next to you, you could have that start and stop button there. Um, Another idea is if you have a basement workshop and you have a metal support beam, you could attach it right next to you onto that. Uh, so it may not always work in every situation. So I'm gonna do that today. Use some scrap plywood and should be pretty fast built.
until this point, you've seen me make a weird box with this flange with a giant hole on it. Yeah, so basically the inside of this is big enough to fit the components on here. And I had to use three quarter inch plywood for either side just to create enough thickness to make a hole that I could screw into. Um, the sides are fine being a half inch. They could probably be even a little bit smaller. Um, the reason the three quarter is I also wanted the outer bounds to still match up with the, the length, the sides. Now, um, something I should have planned out ahead of time, which I didn't, is I want to put on one of these little strain relief uh, cable holders just for the wires coming out, which actually just make sure uh, the wires that you have are rated for the amperage of your tool. The motor on my table saw is 14 amps. So I have a 15 amp cord, should be good. So I have this, I just already had it. And it of course has this little nut that goes on the back and it's meant to sandwich between um, an electrical box, but electrical box aren't made, electrical boxes aren't made out of half inch material. So, so I did a little test off camera and just drilled a hole in half inch material to see if I could actually just thread this in. And it seems like it'll work. I didn't actually thread it all the way through. I didn't want to brute force it and then have to take it back out. But it seems like the threads will catch and I'll have a nice little hole in a strain relief. So I have to drill that hole here. putting like a, a slight chamfer around the edge. This is the closest size. I didn't have a chamfer bit or a, yeah, what do you call it? Yeah, chamfer bit. I didn't have a chamfer bit. that would be big enough. And I just need to add like a little bit of a lip, just enough for the first couple of threads to start catching. And we'll see if we can get this somewhat straight. There we go. A little bit at a time. Just pushing down as I go. Seems to be going straight enough. I don't want to grip it that way. There you go. I just invented a little hack for you. If you have a wooden box that's got too thick of a wall and you can't fit in one of these little strain gauges, I, let's see, what is this? I think this is here, the 3 8 inch size clamp connector. And I use a three quarter inch bit, Forstner bit. I guess it doesn't have to be Forstner. Three quarter inch bit. Drill the hole in. Added a slight chamfer just for the first uh, threads to take purchase. And then very carefully without bending the screws. You know, what would be smart is taking the screws out so you don't destroy them. That would be smart boy thinking. There we go. All right, then I can grip this. And then we can put that back on in the screws. 
back in. Definitely not going anywhere. Bob's your uncle. And if you didn't know that, Bob is your uncle. I sanded these edges to match the profile of this as best I could. Um, but I couldn't get to these on the sander to match this profile. So I'll just do that quickly by hand, give it a once over, and maybe just give it a little spray finish to protect it. two wires so one is coming from the table saw. Well, one is the plug going to the wall that would normally go to the table saw and then the other one is from the motor so they're both going in here and this is interrupting the, um, the power between so I can turn it on it works yeah so it works um, it only extends maybe four feet, but I mean, I really shouldn't be starting the saw more than four feet away anyways. Most of the time it'll probably live attached to the metal frame underneath the saw anyways. If I'm ever cutting a long piece, I also have this workbench here, so it's a little awkward to, if I have a long piece, I can always, this workbench is on caster so I can move it out of the way. But. If I'm cutting like a long thin piece, I can definitely stand back here and feed it through the saw, um, but I can't get around the saw to start it and then get back here, or around the board to start it and get back here. So this hopefully will solve that problem. And all I did is I actually, I'll show a close up in a second, but I installed a washer flush with the top of the uh, workbench so I can have this right here and if I'm holding on to the piece of long wood even if I'm at the saw like I'm finished feeding it through I can still reach the the button back here so I know I'll get some comments people saying this is not really safe and I'm not advising anybody to do this but for myself um, I want to try it out if it's not a great idea in the end, I'll just put it back to the way it was before. If I find that I don't use it that much, or if it's more of an annoyance, then I'll put it back. Yeah, so overall, I'm pretty happy with it, and maybe I'll do an update in the future as to how it's working for me. All right, well, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe for my next video, and like this video, and leave any comments you have below. Thank you.